Okay, we are back, folks. Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, you know, we are talking to Ryan Avery. Uh, he's teaching us about communication skills, how, how leaders can communicate better, how we can all be better communicators with all of our relationships. But I do want to ask a question because it's been in the back of my mind as I see him. There's a backboard there. Tell us a little bit about that board, please. This is my create. It goes. You can't see how wide it goes. Um, but this is where I do. I'm a big visual person, so I set up what's called visualization stations. So if I move it up, see where it says uh, 2014 yeah. world record. I'm breaking a world record on April 16th for the largest book signing in history. So that's just outlining the things that I need to get done and do. And there's a. It's a huge ordeal where a lot of people are on board. So I just got have to make. I'm a visual person, right? So I have to see it all laid out, and that's how I work. You're so. very goal-oriented from what I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. Uh, I like your video that you shared. I think uh, your wife was taking the video prior mm. to the, um, you were setting a goal, and you write down the goal, what you want to do, but you also talk about how we shouldn't be really thinking about the title, but we should train like world champions. Tell us, right. w tell us about that philosophy a little bit. Yeah, so my I'm uh, it's not about being the world champion, it's about training like one because when you train like one, that's when you become the best. Um, champions, they hold themselves to a higher standard, they push themselves, they hang around with people who are better than them, they're constantly learning, they know that they don't know everything. So for me, it's never about a title, um, it's about pushing myself and it's about training like one. So whenever I'm unmotivated or whenever I'm down on myself or I get bad news, I always think, what would a champion do? A champion would get up. A champion would think positive. A champion would encourage people. So don't focus on a title. Titles are meaningless. They have no value. The value comes when you push yourself, when you train, when you do things that are way out of your comfort zone. For me, I don't want you to step out of your comfort zone. I want you to expand your comfort zone. Because I, I do think it's important to be comfortable. You don't want to be uncomfortable all the time. That would be a horrible life, right? But stretching that makes you comfortable to the, all the other things around you. So my, my philosophy is don't aim for a title like a world champion. Just train like one and you'll be so successful. So this is why I think you're going to go so far, Ryan, because you are almost setting yourself up for being a motivational speaker there, and uh, he's got a great sense of humor, but he's also an inspiration to many, many people from what he does. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what you work with leaders, you work with companies. What is the number one challenge for, you know, for a leader to communicate better? What is the one thing that, that seems the common theme, if there is one, that leaders are facing nowadays? Confidence. I work more on building up confidence with leaders who are 40, 50, even 60 years old, men and women. Confidence is what's holding them back. So we do a lot of uh, mindset training and how to change that conversation inside of your head because when you present yourself as confident, you show that you are competent in what you're communicating. So it's very important that you get confident in what it is that you're doing. So I like to take my students and people executive or business executives that I'm working with through a lot of different trainings on how to be more confident because that is the thing that stops everyone, it seems like, in their track. I think every client I have had has always wanted to talk somewhat about how do they improve their confidence. And one of the things that you share with people is that really there, there is no magic formula. There is a lot of practice, and you share that in your one of your videos for leaders, is that we have to practice. That's how you learn. You make mistakes, get on that bike, and that's yeah. how you learn, right? Yeah, I say how you practice is how you will play. So if you want to be a weightlifter and you want to go to the Olympics and you're at the gym and you're lifting five pound weights but the world record's 500, you're never going to get there. So you have to practice how you play. You got to lift up those 20s, you got to lift up those 30s, 40s, 100s, 500 to get there. It's the same with speaking, it's the same with leadership. You have to continuously practice at it. And that's why it's so important when you go out and do a pitch or when you talk one on one with somebody. So I have a list of all of the questions that I get. So I I even write this, uh, I just wrote this one down. I, I keep getting over and over. It's 
it's growing in the aspect of people want to know how to tell better stories. So I wrote that down of how do I tell a better story. Well, I have a Google uh, doc, doc where I go, and all the questions that I get to ask, I write down. So I am ready for those next time I get them. It's about being prepared, right? When you're prepared, right. you're more confident because nothing really throws you off your feet. Absolutely. Um, let's go over to Barry, and I know he's got a couple of questions, maybe one question. Sordas, go ahead. Yeah, uh, you know, Ryan, I mean, this this is good stuff. Clearly, you've accomplished, you know, a tremendous amount for being 25, right? 25? I'm 26 now. 26 now, okay. Big big 26, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> big 26. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Almost what? 30. What, so give us a little backstory. What, what's what's your edge? You know, why are you why are you leaps and bounds, and maybe not in all cases, but well, how have you been able to achieve so much more than peers your own age in in this uh, you know in this space? That's a cool question. I haven't really been asked that in that context before, but I think what it comes down to first off. Uh, comparison is a thief of all joys, right? So if you're older than me and you look at me and you say, man, he's a great speaker and I'm older than him and he's doing that, I'll never be that. Comparison, thief of all joys. You can't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter one. There's different life experiences you have. There are different things that you have that I don't. So don't compare yourself. Only compare yourself against you, right? Um, I, I would say the biggest thing that just jumps off of the top of my head, of course, is my family, my mom and dad. Um, they are just genuine people and down-to-earth, push themselves entrepreneurs who didn't go to college, but they made a life for themselves. Uh, I mean, think they're 59 right now, and they're retired. Uh, they're living on the beach. They're living the life that they want. And so I got to see that growing up. I got to see that it's um, Chelsea, my wife, she says success is not by chance. It's by choice. Mm -hmm. And that's what I saw throughout life was success is a choice. It doesn't matter if you have $4 right now. I mean, I had $84 in my bank account three years ago. $84. I was about to get on food stamps. I had no idea where I was going to go. And three years later, here I am. I'm traveling all over the world, making money. I have more money in my bank account than uh, the average person will when they retire. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because three years ago, I knew nothing about speaking. I just took... This is, this is another one of my favorite things. You don't need an IQ. You need an I will. Okay, Ooh. so I will do Good this. Stuff. I will make this happen. I am the one responsible. It's not by chance, it's by choice, and I have to make it. So what's the choice you're willing to make? What are you willing to give up to move up? That's the big thing that you've got to see because when you step up, you're going to have to let some things go, and some people out there aren't willing to let things go. Well, let me tell you, you're going to stay where you've always stood until you let some things go to move on up. So I think my parents had a huge role in that. I think my wife has a phenomenal role in that. I partnered with someone that is beyond leaps and bounds. I mean, I definitely stepped up on that one when I got Chelsea. Uh, <laughs> so I think my family and Chelsea have really been a huge... There, there's nothing special about me. I'm not some smart genius. I'm... I, look, I have zit still. I'm 26. I'm a kid, right? So there's, not, there's nothing special about me. Um, what I do is I've just decided to say, I will. I will do this. And that's what you have to do, too. You and I are exactly the same in the fact of we have the opportunity and the decision to say that. I will. That was good. Thank, I mean, that, was, that was really good. Tal, just go ahead and forward that to Ted. That will probably be up by Ted. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think we've covered <laughs> uh, several uh, questions in that, in, in that answer. So, But it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So let me go over to Carol there. So, Ryan, okay, you obviously have a great background that give, gave you the confidence and the foundation that allowed you to say, I will, and to just, you know, throw caution to the wind and go for it. Yeah. But a lot of people don't have that same background and haven't had that opportunity. So what would you tell them the first thing they can do to start building that confidence to say yeah. I will and let go of the, the baggage that's holding them back. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point, right? So 
people often see the success, but they forget the struggles. Mm -hmm. And I don't talk about the struggles often. So, like, you see Ellen DeGeneres, and you see her, and she's so successful, and she's phenomenal, a New York Times bestseller, and millions of people are retweeting her, but nobody is remembering the struggles that she went through to get to where she is today. So everyone faces them, from Ellen DeGeneres to Lincoln. I mean, we all do. I... Yes, I had a good background, but there were thousands of struggles. Even today, I my day has been like this. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like, I have failed so many times today, and I've got so many no's, but I just forget to share those with you. Um, for every yes I get, I probably get like 30 no's. To, I just got, I am, I am so excited because I'm interviewing my favorite author of all time, and I have reached out to probably... I cannot name you how many authors I've reached out to, and this one said yes. So you, I would just say, again, it is a choice. It, we all come from different backgrounds. Whether you were poor, whether you were rich, whether you were gay, whether you're straight, whether you're, uh, whether you're gay or straight, not were, couldn't really change that one. Uh, <laughs> whether, you, whether you're black, white, like we all come from different backgrounds. Make the choice that you will have whatever it is that you have. And don't compare yourself to other people. Don't. Just can't do it. That's what I would recommend. All right, great. Uh, Liz, go ahead. Ryan, first of all, I am so impressed with you. I can't, I can't even tell you how impressed I am with you. Well, right thank you. Now. I, so, to, uh, kind of a two-part question. Do you feel like it's important for employees at every level of an organization to acquire speaking skills? And if so, what kind of benefits would you try to sell to management to get them to buy into the idea that they need to train all of their employees to be good speakers? I would say 100%. Because those people at the front lines are the ones who are dealing with your customers. And those customers are the reason why those people at the higher level get paid, right? So if you don't have customers coming in the door, you're not going to have a job at management, at senior management, or executive level. So training your frontline, training every part of every organization or department on how to communicate your message. The, the biggest one is how to communicate your message effectively, but also making sure that it is, sure that it is succinct. So if I call the financial department, it's the same. If I call the technical department, it's the same. The, the helping everyone understand the same messaging is critical because you're moving, and I think that's the biggest problem that we're going to see are these companies who are going to uh, grow really fast, and they're going to destroy themselves because their front line doesn't necessarily know the vision of the CEO or the management level. And if the front line or those people who are right there dealing with the customers aren't able to communicate effectively, they've got no business. That's it. So that, what I would say, would be the most important ones to, to train are the, the entry-level people who are getting hired into these companies. Definitely. Great. Uh, Ryan, I want to ask you just kind of a last question here is, who is your favorite speaker and mm -hmm. why? Oh, I have a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. But if I had to name one, it would be Seth Godin. He is my favorite. Seth Godin is a phenomenal author. But more importantly, I like him because he speaks his mind. He has a phenomenal... He I've dissected several of his speeches, and he uses this great formula that I like that I call the Godin formula. He talks about what happened, what is happening, what will happen. And he does a good job of that. And I think that's a great formula that you can use to communicate any type of message. Um, but he's consistent, he's approachable, he is um, honest, he does not go with the status quo, he's always teaching, he is the speaker that I look up to in a variety of ways, so Seth Godin would be my number one, and I cannot wait to eat pizza with him one day soon. Awesome. Well, he's on my list, too, so uh, yeah. maybe we can have pizza together. But, Perfect. Uh, you know, listen, we've had, I think uh, you are right up there for, for our favorite speakers there, so because you do oh, an amazing you. job. You covered, you uh, managed to cover a lot of areas, not only speaking, but motivating people to aspire to to achieve their dreams, because I know that's one of your, your uh, philosophies is to dream big, so I think you yeah. touched on a nerve that many... And it doesn't even matter how old they are. Uh, yeah. You know, it's never too late to achieve your dream. And I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. 
Absolutely. If I could just end on one thing, I, sure. I really want to stress that if you're listening or watching this and you're in the United States, don't take our First Amendment for granted. Use your voice. Make a difference. There's a message inside of you, and our forefathers, our founding fathers, gave us that amendment so we could use our voice. Not everyone in this world has that right. So even if you disagree with other people or there's something that you want to send, use your voice. It's so powerful. It can change the world. That's what makes the difference, and I want to encourage all of you who are afraid or who are not confident or have a message inside of you, share your voice because not everyone gets that opportunity. And America being able to do that here in the United States is the best thing that we can do. Great, great. Well, thank you guys, and thanks for our viewers to tuning in. And uh, there'll be the two segments. You can view them at your leisure. Um, I'll be sure to send the link to Ryan and everybody else. So thank you so much, and everybody have a great evening. Thanks. thanks. All right, let me just. Thanks, stop. Ryan.